the Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, of the Central Bank of Nigeria held its 294th meeting on the 25th and 26th of March 2024 to review recent economic and financial developments, as well as assess risks to the outlook. Decisions of the MPC. The committee's decisions are as follows. One, raise the MPR by 200 basis points to 24.75 from 22.75%. Two, adjust the asymmetric corridor around the MPR at plus 100 to 300 basis points, to minus 300 basis points. Three, retain the cash reserve ratio of deposit money banks at 45%. Four, adjust the cash reserve ratio of merchant banks from 10% to 14%. And five, retain the liquidity ratio at 30%. Considerations. The considerations of the committee at this meeting focused on the current inflationary pressures and the need to anchor inflation expectations as well as ensure sustained exchange rate stability. These considerations underscore the importance of the CBN's commitment to the price stability mandate and the need to urgently bring inflation under control to ensure that purchasing power of ordinary Nigerians is restored in the short to medium term. Members noted the continued rise in headline inflation, driven largely by food prices because of supply shortages and high costs of logistics and distribution. The committee, therefore, was of the view that addressing food insecurity is key to containing current inflationary pressures. On this note, members commended the ongoing efforts of the federal government towards addressing food insecurity. Some of these measures include the provision of various palliatives, release of grains from the strategic reserves, distribution of seeds and fertilizers, as well as farm implements for dry season farming. The committee, therefore, called for the full implementation of the federal government's agricultural policies and programs to improve food supply and further advised for broader fiscal consolidation, particularly on the improvements of tax collection and tax to GDP ratio. The committee noted with satisfaction the level of stability achieved in the foreign exchange market in the last few weeks. This, in the view of members, reflects the impact of the bank's recent policy actions and reforms, as well as increased transparency in the market. In addition, the committee noted the efforts of the bank in offsetting verified foreign currency obligations, an action that will greatly enhance customer, in, I beg your pardon, that will greatly enhance investor confidence and attract foreign investments to Nigeria. The NPC also reviewed developments in the banking system and noted that the industry remains safe, sound, and stable. The committee thus called on the bank 
to sustain its surveillance and ensure compliance of banks with existing regulatory and macroprudential guidelines. The NPC also enjoined the bank to expedite action on the recapitalization of banks to strengthen the system against potential risks in an increasingly globalized world. Consequently, at this meeting, the NPC was faced with the option of either progressing with its tightening cycle or hold to observe the impact of the previous rate hike and adjustment of the cash reserve requirement. After reviewing the balance of risks and the near-term inflation outlook, members were convinced of the need to progress with the tightening cycle. Key developments in the domestic and global economies. Domestic headline inflation rose further to 31.70% in February 2024 from 29.9% in January. Food inflation accelerated to 37.92% from 35.41%, while core inflation rose to 25.13% from 23.59%. Key drivers of inflationary pressure remain the strong exchange rate pass-through to domestic prices, rising cost of transportation, high cost of energy, and other production inputs, lingering insecurity, especially in food-producing areas, and legacy infrastructure deficits. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics showed that real GDP grew by 3.46% in the fourth quarter of 2023, compared with 2.54% in the previous quarter. Staff forecasts for 2024 indicate that the Nigerian economy will grow by 3.38%. Disruptions to the global supply chain associated with pockets of geopolitical tensions continue to pose a key concern to monetary policy. Global inflation has, however, continued to decelerate in 2024 but is expected to remain above the long-run objectives of major central banks. Interest rates of advanced economy central banks are thus expected to remain high in the short to medium term before commencing a descent. Consequently, global financial conditions may remain tight through 2024. Accordingly, the committee will continue to monitor developments in the global and domestic economies to ensure that inflationary expectations are anchored to restore and sustain macroeconomic stability. All 12 members attended the meeting. The next NPC meeting will be held on the 20th and 21st of May, 2024. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, sir. That was communique number 151, presented by the NPC chairman and governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Mr. Olayemi Kadusu. We now take questions from the media. Please state your name, your medium, and then ask your questions. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. My name is Sunday Michael Ogu. I write for Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, Mr. Governor, I've got two questions. The first one is uh, that um, the MPC decision is consistent with some of the public statements you have made about um, how the, the, um, you would continue to raise interest, tightening interest rates uh, as, as a way of targeting inflation. My worry, however, is, is this the only option in town? We have continued to tighten in several MPC meetings, and the inflation has continued to, to skyrocket. At what point, you know, uh, will we begin to see a moderation in this tightening? At how much of growth are we sacrificing, you know, to rein in um, this inflation? That's the first one. My second question is, you have also talked about, uh, you've commended uh, the efforts that you have made in, in settling FX uh, liabilities, as we have seen with your recent releases. But the organized private sector are saying that your funds have been retained for extended period, in some cases over one year. Uh, what exactly is happening to those funds as far as uh, uh, this whole settling of FX uh, situation is concerned? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daily Trust. Um, well, two very important questions, one on the issue of tightening and the other on the issue of backlogs of um, forward transactions. Now, let me say that, um, yes, uh, from our perspective, um, the key thing for us as a central bank is to be fully focused on our core mandate. And that core mandate basically is to fight inflation and to ensure price stability. So there's no ambiguity in that, and there's no compromise on that. We are very, very concerned that the purchasing power of the average Nigerian should be restored to the levels that they know it to be. And what we are saying is that going forward, um, we expect that if the environment is such that requires us to tighten, we will tighten. Our projections, however, indicate that things will begin to moderate from about May um, onwards. And the projection, as you may know, is that by the end of the year, we're expecting um, the inflationary rate to have come down significantly. So we believe that we are on the right course. And of course, one particular area of chair as a result of the actions we have taken is the moderation in the foreign exchange rate, which you have seen. Now, uh, don't take the foreign exchange in isolation because it does have major pass through to inflation. And to the extent that we've seen this happen and we expect it will continue to moderate, we are confident that these tools and measures that the central bank is using will ensure that you know, the inflationary spiral will gradually be brought under, under stricter control. Um, of course, from the MPC standpoint, the MPC does make decisions based on economic data and, of course, market conditions. So as the next MPC, which you know, which I've announced will be made, will be taken in, 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 in May, they will obviously look at the existing variables and make a decision accordingly. I hope that will answer the question on tightening. Then, with respect to um, growth, yes, um, it, there, there appears to be a trade-off of some sort, but the good news is that we expect the tightening um, to not be long drawn. That really is the good news. We don't expect this to be something that will subsist into too long into the future. And of course, if the, the right responses are happening in the economy, then I have no doubt that the MPC will take the decision it has to take to um, properly ensure that uh, the situation into the future is able to um, take the growth considerations adequately as they should be. Um, with respect to the foreign exchange forwards. Now, I think it may be important to 
um, say a few things with respect to the context. Now, recall that when we came in, in September, we had a backlog of forward transactions, which um, were contractual in nature, and which had already been, as I say, contracted before we came in. Now, one, it was clear to us that it was very important in, in the interest of the credibility of the central bank, which at that point in time was very much in question, that we were able to satisfy and take care of these forwards. And if you recall, during the Senate hearings, I had actually made reference to this and said that this would be a priority to ensure that we take care of these forwards within the resource constraints we had and as soon as we could. And that was why, on a regular basis, I tried to address the issue, address the press, and be transparent as possible to allow um, Nigerians to know exactly where we stood and what we were doing. And you will recall that during that period, we settled, you know, certain tranche, and then we got wind of the fact that, well, there were a number of transactions which, quite frankly, had some, had some issues with respect to the, to the genuineness of them. So we said, well, in, in, in that case, the best thing may be to let us get a well-reputed organization that can do a proper forensic of the transactions that are so defined as forward contracted transactions. And that was how we came across and brought in Deloitte management consultants who took time, and this really did take months. This is not something that happened overnight, and a lot of this work was going on and people didn't know. But they took months painstakingly to go through all the documents, all the documents, and to ensure that you know, they, could, they had a report which we could rely on. In the course of that, of course, we determined that a number of these transactions did not qualify, and I've said this before. Um, in some cases, you had some requests which, well, you actually had some allocations that were made in millions of dollars, which were never requested for. You also had some where they had no foreign, where they had no Naira, and they were also allocated, you know, huge sums of foreign exchange, and the list goes on. And it was for that reason that we refused to validate those particular transactions. We refused to validate them. Because, you know, apart from the fact that documentation was not satisfactory, in many cases, they were outright illegal. And the law enforcement agencies, of course, are now looking into those transactions that are, as far as we're concerned, not valid to be paid. I would emphasize that if there's any information to the contrary, we would, in due course, consider that. But as of today, that is exactly where it stands, and the law enforcement agencies are taking a very, very hard look at those transactions. We have settled, and as of today, as I have said before, I will say it again, that the valid transactions, as far as the central bank has been, the Central Bank of Nigeria is concerned, have been taken care of. We are also not mindful of the fact that there may be, there just may be some um, stakeholders and um, some stakeholders who over a period of time may have had backlogs in one form or the other. We're not unmindful that that could be the case, that some of those may go back, you know, years, a long period of time. We've done what we can to make the market as open and transparent and liquid as possible. So those particular stakeholders are free to access those markets and, and take care of their backlogs. Okay, but we have met the, the verified backlogs 
of contractual obligations as we deem them forward transactions. Okay, um, good afternoon, Governor Oyinye Wanchuku from Business Day. Sure. Uh, thank you so much for taking uh, uh, time to explain the issues around uh, this FX backlog, which is the question I really wanted to ask. But quickly, is it, um, can you get a sense of how much you know, is still ineligible? You know, um, they have not pledged sure. that the, these uh, stakeholders are claiming. Sure. And can, can we also understand what makes you know, these claims ineligible? Sorry, say that again. What? What makes you know, those claims okay. ineligible? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I think the figure is about 2.7, 2.4, I beg your pardon, 2.4 billion ineligible. 2.4 billion ineligible. Okay, and as I said, there have been several cases, quite frankly, that go from documentation, form M, not no form M available, or as I mentioned earlier, cases where allocations were made and no requests were asked for, or cases where allocations were made and no Naira was available. So, you know, it's, the, the list goes on. So that's a good example of some of the infractions that we noted. Good afternoon, Governor. My name is Isa Abduwaha from New Telegraph Newspapers. Uh, CBN has lifted forex restriction on dairy product. Did the bank consider the impacts of its action on local markets? Thank you very much. Now, um, again, this is a situation where as far as the central bank is concerned. We observed that it is important that our operations are as open and transparent as possible. Because it is this lack of transparency that drives people away from the market. Where the market feels that things, there's something that isn't quite right or there are distortions, there's a tendency for them to hold back. And one of our objectives, as I have said a number of times, is to ensure that we regulate the market in such a way that it is open and transparent. We observe that in this particular case, only six companies are allowed to to bring in um, dairy products and its milk products and its derivatives, only six. And, and we believe that this is olig oligopolistic at best. And that in any case, um, we should not constrain anybody that wants to come to the foreign exchange market to purchase foreign exchange from doing so. We do not believe we should constrain them from doing so. It is not, it's not our responsibility, it's not our job to do that. We should leave the market open, transparent, and let those who are in a position to, to deal in a particular um, area do so. At least, certainly, we will not ban them from the foreign exchange, um, 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 we will not ban them from the foreign exchange market. We will not. It is, yeah, and certainly we will not restrict that market to just six um, 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 players. We will not do so. Um, good afternoon, Governor and members of the MPC. I'm Nancy uh, Naji. Um, Governor, I want to ask a question following up from the question I asked on Binance uh, last month because there's been a, a long, warm month from the time you addressed us here. So my question is really around the status of Binance and now in the country, which is really unclear, as um, very unfortunately one of its executives escaped a custody just a few days ago, while another remains detained uh, with the office of um, the National Security Advisor. Amid allegations, you mentioned it here last uh, month, about $26 billion uh, dollars, uh, flow from that same organization. So the allegations and accusations of Binance uh, negatively um, you know, manipulating uh, the Naira. 
And this has really led, at least from what I've seen in the last few days, it has led to a sense of ambiguity, as well as a perceived uh, absence of a unified approach from the federal government uh, uh, regarding the matter. My question to you really is around what is the CBN stance um, on these ongoing developments? I had um, the FIRS chair, was it yesterday or so, Zach Adedi, to talk about, of course, it will not hamper tax evasion issues and all of that. So I would really like to know what the CBN stance is on that. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much. Again, a very good question, and thank you for that. And I'll be surprised if it didn't come up, given what has been going on. <laughs> Um, well, look, first and foremost, let me clarify to say that um, the central bank, the central bank does have, at least we consider ourselves as having the wherewithal to collaborate with other agencies of government. And, and that is a very important function for us. And where we see we can work with, with other um, um, arms of government, we will do so. And I must say that, um, and this perhaps should touch on what you just said about a month ago. Um, a month ago, we actually did have collaboration with law enforcement agencies, EFCC, um, the SEC, and, the, and other regulatory bodies as well. And I think what came out of that, quite frankly, has work in progress, but very, very, very positive, as far as I can see, very positive, Office of the National Security Advisor. So we've been sharing information together. However, in this particular case, um, the responsibility for regulating cryptocurrency is not our own. It isn't ours. It is strictly that of the Security and Exchange Commission. Okay, that's not our responsibility. And, um, of course, the issue of um, somebody, people, as, you know, being, who have been held in, and, you know, the, what we've all read in the press, again, that's, strictly speaking, um, the Office of the National Security Advisor. That's not within the purview of the Central Bank. So, Unfortunately, there is nothing to report to you to tell you, but just to clarify that that is really the relationship that the central bank has on this matter. We have some questions from some media organizations from Lagos. One is from Uchi Usim of the Sun Newspapers. Permit me, Mr. Governor, to ask the question on his behalf. He said, recently the CBN donated 2.15 million sacks of fertilizer to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security for distribution to farmers. Does this signify a return to development and finance intervention? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Another question that I know has um, dogged the minds of so many. And the, the, and the question is, does this suggest a return to developmental interventions? And the answer is no, it doesn't. And um, let me explain why it doesn't. Because we have been consistent in saying that we will withdraw from direct interventions. We have been consistent in saying so. We have also been consistent in saying that we will work with those who we believe have the capacity to successfully um, intervene in whatever manner they, 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 they can. And that, by the way, includes even uh, capacity building. It's not, strictly speaking, um, you know, direct funding or anything like that. It isn't. It's, it, it extends to a whole host of different areas. So where we see that that capacity is there, the central bank would be happy to partner. And that goes um, similar to what one had just said about the 
collaboration that we have had with, with regulatory authorities and also law enforcement authorities. But let's face this particular issue. Now, the, the fertilizer that was given out was the residue of an intervention that had been done before we came into office. It was not something that was done directly by us. And the options were either to leave them there to rot away or to give them to those that we believed had the capacity to distribute. And that is exactly what we did with the, um, the, the handing over to the Ministry of, of Agriculture. In actual fact, the way I see it is that we've taken those particular merchandise and put it where it rightly belongs. Thank you, sir. I have another question from Babajide Komolafe of Vanguard. 